this ends the case. I mean, it's over. A mistrial without prejudice means it's subject to, to recurring. And there's a whole other group of severed defendants that are still out there and awaiting resolution. All right, let's check this out. Well, let's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can step over this right here. Mm, let's see here. All right, so what do you, what's the first question? What do you have to say? Um, what do you think about, why did you do this? What, what well, if you could, just say your name and spell it for us, just in case anyone else is going through My this My name is Nicole Westmore. <laughs> You're Bruce Harvey? <laughs> it's Bruce Harvey. Democracy. No. walk us through what you think of this plea deal you were able to negotiate. Well, uh, uh, insofar as it resolves all of these charges against Mr. Nichols, um, I think it is an exceptional result. It's an I agree. exceptional result for the following reasons. No murder charges. Amen. No gang charges. Yeah. No factual acknowledgments required by the state. This is crazy. No, um, no other charges except for one conspiracy charge that was factually underpinned by convictions that Mr. Nichols already had from almost six years ago. Mm -hmm. So that result, I think, is an excellent result for him. It resolves all of these cases. You were very specific in which parts of the RICO exactly. you admitted to. Explain that and why that's so important moving forward. Well, that's that's exactly what I was was referring to before. You know, a RICO, the RICO charge in this case was a RICO conspiracy. And underlying the RICO conspiracy were all the hundred plus factual predicates, <clears throat> some of which have already been resolved by and against Mr. Nichols, some of them we hadn't even gotten to. And I don't believe the state would have been able to prove Mr. Nichols' responsibility for those predicate acts. So this was, yeah, we were in a conspiracy, yeah, we acknowledge that factually the underpinnings of the RICO conspiracy are satisfied by what already was presented and what he had already pled to, but nah, -uh, nothing else. No, as, as we said, no murder, no guns, nothing else. No gang charges. Listen, there is no gang charge. He did not acknowledge being in the gang, being responsible for being in the gang committing any kind of violent act on behalf of any gang. Yes, I was in a overall conspiracy. Thank you, Celia. You were behind kind of the original mistrial motion that led to this flurry of negotiations. Did just walk us through kind of how it went from that to taking a plea? Well, you know, the same, there's several, you know, errors in the case until we had to ask for a mistrial. So we were satisfied that the judge, you know, she heard us and, and our motion and asking for a mistrial and that, you know, errors could not be repeatedly occur in front of the jury and inadmissible evidence being heard by the jury. And so we're glad that the judge, uh, you know, heard our motion and said, you know, do you want a mistrial and will you take a mistrial with, without prejudice? And, you know, and then we went into negotiation and we're pleased with our, the outcome of our negotiation. How relieved are you after, you know, being part of Georgia's longest trial that, you know, your portion of this at least is over? Well, uh, now we can wear B suits and A suits. No. <laughs> How relieved are we? You know, um, once you're in that routine and once you're there with your fellow lawyers and your fellow co-defendants, I mean, that it, it, it was almost ritualistic. I mean, we were there every day. So, um, I mean, we're relieved because the result for Mr. Nichols was the right result. You know, now we have to deal with the rest of the world. We, we can, they can release our, us from our kidnapped status. You're going to miss courtroom once? Um, yes and no. Yes, and clearly. 
Um, but I'm glad that all of us could work that resolution. And that resolution, again, from Mr. Nichols was no gain, no factual acknowledgments, no murders. Um, so it is, he can go on about his life and um, get out. He's a young man. He's, He's a nice bit. looking man. He's a smart guy. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that this projects him forward and doesn't um, leave him in the lurch. It, I saw that you choked up during, uh, and this had to be a difficult decision because during this time, this he's become family in a sense. How difficult uh, was it actually deciding not to go with the the mistrial without prejudice versus go ahead and making yeah, that, that deal? Yes. That allows the case to continue and doesn't resolve the case and doesn't give any sense of finality. W without the factual acknowledgments, without agreeing. Factual acknowledgments was a big deal. Contentions, this ends the case. I mean, it's over. A mistrial without prejudice means it's subject to, to recurring. And there's a whole other group of severed defendants that are still out there in awaiting resolution. And I think we're in the best posture at this particular point with this particular judge in the two years that we've been litigating this and everything that has happened to strike at this particular point. And that's a great point, which I think we haven't talked about. <clears throat> the factual acknowledgments and being forced to testify is what got Monk Tunk in the situation that he's in. Now we see it in this instance, I mean, Mr. Nichols is done. He doesn't have to show back up to court unless they ask him to testify, which in that case, he's not going to need immunity for anything because this part of the this part of his trial or this part of the indictment is basically gone other than his probation. So, I mean, essentially, if they call him to testify, he could go up there and plead the fifth. He could go up there and not cooperate. But either way, I mean, that's a that's a big win, too. A, a lot of people don't understand that, so I'm, I'm glad that you pointed that out. Okay, I, you know, two. Doubling <laughs> up. I got in a fight with two the other day. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> it comes with a terrible. Um, you were talking about, you know, you guys do a word of the day. Yes. Can yes. you talk about that and kind of what's next for him once he gets out? Well, can That's I right, Sean. He's a, he, he is a very receptive man. He's like a sponge. He doesn't have a formal education. He doesn't have um, a, a, a consolidated family upbringing. Um, but he's very curious and he's very smart. So we would use a word or get a word a day and, and we would define it. We would use it in a sentence, and um, you know you can see his intellectual curiosity. He's a really good kid and a smart kid, and I want him. I truly. Oh, sorry. Oh man, look at him. Two years, you know, over two years um, with our clients. It's a lot. And uh, and like Attorney Harvey saying, he's intelligent. And he's so much more than, unfortunately, what comes out during a trial process. And, you know, the word of day, we ask the word of day, myself, Attorney Harvey, we go back and forth of picking a word, and uh, we, we teach him the pronunciation of the word. And then, you know, two, three weeks later, he'll use a word that, that he learned you know, two, three weeks before, and, and he keeps it going. And so... He's, he's a great they bonded, man. And we're glad that this is over for him. It's been two years too long. <clears throat> All right. Now, I'm not going to play the rest of the video because I really want y'all to go over and support In the Know with Miss LJ Hall. A super, super dope video. I'm glad she got this interview, too.